Hello, my creative friend. Welcome to another creative spark. I absolutely love this little book and I have shared it so many times. I will tell you the stories uh, about that another day. But today I want to read to you and see what will be sparked in your imagination by hearing these words. The first trees I knew well were the apples and pears in the garden of my childhood home. This may sound rural and bucolic, but it was not, for the house was a semi-detached in a 1920s suburb at the mouth of the Thames, some 40 miles from London. The back garden was tiny, less than a tenth of an acre, but my father had crammed one end and a side fence with grid iron espaliers and cordons. Even the minute lawn had five orchard apple trees, kept manageable only by constant debranching and pruning. It was an anomaly among our neighbors' more conventional patches, even a touch absurd, as if it were trying to be a fragment of the kitchen garden of some great country house. No one, in fact, thought of it as a folly because of the fruit those trees yielded. The names of apples and pears are rather like the names of wines, no sure guide in themselves to the quality. Two labels may read the same, but the two trees that wear them may yield fruit as different as a middling and a great vineyard from the same slope. Even the same tree can vary from year to year. As with the vine, the essential things are soil, situation, annual climate, but after those chance factors, human care. My father's trees, already happy in the alluvial clay of the area, must have been among the most closely pruned, cosseted and prayed for in the whole of England and regularly won him prizes at local shows. These trees had a far greater influence on our lives than I ever realized when I was young. I really strongly resonate with this story of trees, with the love of trees. For my family, you are already guessing, was very much of a similar persuasion. Although we had a bigger patch of land, so my great-grandparents, my great-grandfather, my grandfather and my grandmother and my parents were so much in love with trees, especially fruit trees, that they have constantly planted and looked after these wonderful trees. So our garden back home in Serbia, this is actually the home of the Fine Art and Soul Retreat, where we will meet in person one day when this situation where, in which we live today is over, is full, full to the brim of wonderful fruit trees. So we have cherries and pears and apples of different varieties and also sour cherries, plum trees, also many, many different types of plum trees, walnuts. Um, I'm trying to think now how many hazelnuts, you name it, we have those trees there. So I just wanted to say that they were inspiration in many of my photographs, in my paintings, in my award-winning painting as well. So those trees are very much part of our lives. And if I say that, it means that I prove right. My 
ancestors. I proved them right for they knew they were planting a tree and allowing us, me and my children now, to enjoy the fruits, to enjoy their shade and to enjoy this wonderful co-creation that a family has opportunity to create. So there you go. I shared my story with you as a direct inspiration of the words I just read to you. I'm very curious to find out what has this story or these two stories inspired you to create today. Please do share with me in the comments and join me tomorrow for more.